That was a great introduction to SIP security by Peter. Uh, I would like to carry from there and show why you need to pay more attention to wipe security, particularly in the advent of these vulnerabilities we're going to demonstrate, how a wipe vulnerability can be carried over into data world and confidential customer data can be cop copied from laptops and smart devices by hackers. My name is Krishna Kropati. I'm the founder and CTO. Unfortunately, Sachin could not make it, so I'm substituting him. Sipera uh, Systems is a uh, unified communications and voice over IP security company. We focus extremely on developing solutions and services for voice over IP and unified communications. With that, here's the outline. Sorry. First, we're going to establish some baseline of wipe versus data. And to many people, it's not obvious. You know, it's, people think it's another application. So we're going to talk about a little bit on that. Then we're going to show you how easy to build an attack uh, script or a tool, just like using a Cybers tool, like what Peter mentioned. And we're going to share some of the vulnerabilities that we have discovered and published around uh, the devices, uh, the dual mode phones, Wi-Fi phones, and soft phones. And finally, I'm going to show you the real cool thing that hacks, what will happen to these devices and the QA. Sorry. Here is uh, Cipera Viper Labs. Uh, before I get into details, we've been working on for four years to find new vulnerabilities that exist in voice over IP. And we've come across many number, thousands of vulnerabilities in both uh, protocols, products, devices, and systems. Some of them uh, attack the PBXs, voicemail systems. Some of them uh, attack the end users and devices. So they exist in not only SIP, they exist in all the protocols. It's all there. And we catalog those. And Viper stands for Voice over IP Exploit Research. That's our focus. Just like X-Force uh, for ISS and Avert Labs for McAfee, we extremely focus on Voice over IP security and unified communications. And these vulnerabilities we cataloged and shared with our vendors and partners, as well as the public community. So you know, for this year alone, we have published about 26 new unique vulnerabilities in voice over IP that are some of them we're going to show in the demo here. Again, uh, this is another pointer just to bring it Voice over IP vulnerability research is a special to, uh, subject by itself. You know, we combine our, sorry, we combine the vulnerability research expertise, uh, four years of expertise that we have, and we have developed our own lava tools like Cybers, but we go much beyond in complete vulnerability exploit testing and offer as a service to vendors, and enterprises and carriers. So we're working closely with many vendors in this space. When they come up with a new product or services, they can take this, uh, give us, the, and we can validate their products, as well as uh, the actual enterprise networks, voice over IP enterprise networks. In, in addition, we also have uh, voice over IP security solutions and appliances that we sell that can be used to protect against these attacks. So let me begin with what's the difference between voice over IP and data. A lot of times it's not obvious. When you look into the details, it's kind of makes sense. I'll take an example here. Wipe is completely different. 
in that uh, compared with an email, right? Email is a client-server application where clients connect to server to either download an email or an upload an email. So a TCP connection is established, upload, download, TCP connection closed. Look at the voice or IP. Each phone behaves like a client as well as server. Client to make calls, server to receive calls. So if you look at it, a server is usually is the one which always on, always receiving, always listening for new connections like HTTP server or email server. So in this scenario, each phone is itself a server. So there are like thousands of phones in the network. That's one of the big, big difference. So the servers are many and they're always listening for new calls. So always on reflects to always vulnerable. That's a, a key difference. And more importantly, it also uses a hybrid mechanism. You have call signaling to set up the call, but once the call setup is complete, actual media or voice or video is exchanged in a separate UDP channel, which is only, I mean, uh, two peering, peering networks. So you have a client server on one side, you have peering on the other side, and each phone acting like a server. So that's a key difference here. So we have to treat the voice over IP differently, look at it in, a, in its own merit. Obviously, you know, voice has evolved with Alec Graham Bell you know, for 100 years in a different island. Now when you look at that voice and what you have done, what we have done is in the last 10 years, we've taken that voice as a core application service on its own island and moved it to an internet-based or IP-based application, right? So that's a key transition that happened in the last 10 years, but the characteristics and behavior of the beast voice over IP remains the same. You expect a dial tone. You expect to make calls. That doesn't change, right? If you don't get dial tone, you'll drop the call. I mean, you put the, put the phone down. So that's a key difference when you look at it. And you cannot, like a device, a security device, cannot sit there for a couple of seconds to process a call signaling or a media because it will have a tremendous impact on the quality of the service. So we worked 10 years to make voice over IP to the quality level today, right? And you implement a security which is doing some data and that reverse the progress that we made. So. Those are the key points here. Another way to look at is wipe is not an island anymore. Uh, it's a very important distinction. Uh, this is one of the things that drives why you need to pay more attention to voice over IP security today. Today we're not talking about replacing a desk phone with another desk phone. We have done that for past eight, nine years when the PBXS, IP PBXS started happening. Today we're talking about voice beyond desk phone. We are talking about as an application in the core, connecting to CRM, on the desktop side, integrating with Outlook and other IM presence applications. When we do that, certainly it's not an island anymore. So enterprises and carriers are all doing adding remote workers over the internet because broadband is proliferating. You know, everywhere you go broadband, why can't I take advantage of that? It used to be that I run a line from my enterprise back to the home to make a remote worker happen. That's a very expensive proposition. So WIPE as a service can bring that down to zero cost. At the same time, it can give the quality of service because we made it work. Mobile workers with the dual mode phones, that's, we're going to show the demo on that. And in enterprises, we're off connecting soft phones. You know, everybody got a soft phone now. You can download many third-party soft phones or a major vendor soft phones. And you can download these soft phones on a, a mobile phone as well. So the soft phones are proliferating. In fact, Microsoft XP Service Pack 2 has a built-in SIP dialer in it. 
is ready to be used. I mean, RTC API, for example. So those are the things that are happening today. And fast forward one year from now, you will see many more dialers, many more uh, voice over IP clients that are everywhere. So that's a big concern because, A, it's a server. Voice over IP client is a server. So you have thousands and thousands. Every laptop is a server after that. And other things going on, like enabling SIP trunks, not only for enterprises, but also carriers peering those. And the, what, what's going to happen there, right? SIP trunks will enable you to receive calls directly into the data center instead of using PRI trunks. And that's a significant value for disaster recovery as consolidation. At the same time, can you trust a SIP trunk? Can you trust the caller ID coming through the SIP trunk? How about that spoofed by somebody else? Right? Those are the issues that keeps propping up. But we're not going to talk about that today. We're focusing on more dual mode phones and soft phones. And again, I'm going to show you one attack that can proliferate into data side and you can copy the files from remote laptop. Another significant change is happening. My cell phone is no more a closed system. It's a smart device with hardware, standard hardware, standard operating system, standard applications. You know, today's cell phones, there are 2 billion cell phones out there. Those are changing. Roughly 600 million cell phones will be smartphones by 2009. Now, what does that mean? Anybody could download any application on those. And what is the impact of that? The openness combined with open access like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, creates opportunities for hackers to download bots, just like you're downloading worms and viruses onto these phones. And the impact is huge. It not only affect those phones, but also can affect the carriers who are offering those services. Imagine, you know, the two billion uh, cell phone users getting spammed from one or two smartphones. So those are the observations as these dual mode phones start happening today with iPhone is one example. We've seen many vulnerabilities on those already. So the transition is rapidly going on in that direction. So this is another kicker. Now let's look at the uh, risk versus risk analysis here, right? Today we talk about voice over IP security, but voice over IP 1.0, which is replacing desk phone with another desk phone, closing with a voice VLAN, data VLAN, voice VLAN perimeter, so that nobody can reach it. It's just similar to the TDM system. Now with dual mode phones, soft phones, that's no more true. So you look at it, closed system, closed IP phone system is a little more vulnerable. The probability of attack increased because there are IP addresses out there, but it's still asset value is low because what are you affecting? You may be doing toll fraud, right? So you can use a wipe system to call, cause a toll fraud, like what happened in the uh, New York Times reports about, about the toll fraud that caught uh, 